Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to this evening's TF Together session. This evening we're delighted to welcome Advancing Women Artists Director Linda Falcone and AWA advocate and artist Rhea Stavropoulos to discuss the non-profit organization's current projects dedicated to restoring art by women. Uh, AWA have an incredible commitment to rediscovering, uh, restoring and then exhibiting art by what are considered history's invisible women. Um, and a particularly exciting project that you have right now is the Garzoni Challenge. So perhaps we could start with that and you could tell us a little about the exhibition that's being held at Pitti Palace until June 28th and the competition um, or rather the appeal that you have made for artwork based on this exhibition. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for welcoming us here today at um, the Florentine Together. And I always feel a bit like I'm at home uh, to be with you and talk with everyone who is tuning in. So thank you for that, first of all. Mm, definitely one of the one of the current projects of Advancing Women Artists right now is the Arts and Challenge, which is linked to the exhibition on show at the Pizza Galleries, uh, in particular the Pitti part of it, that is um, organized in conjunction with the Medici Archive Project and it was curated uh, by U.S. art historian Sheila Barker. And AWA has worked with the Uffizi for, for several years, particularly um, relating to their March 8th quote-unquote Women's Day shows. And we began in 2017 with Paul show and continued um, the year after, or two years after, with female perspectives, um, and so this year, with the with the display of Giovanna Garzoni's works and the exhibition called "The Immensity of the Universe in the Art of Giovanna Garzoni," we we at AWA had really started thinking, you know, how can we be a support to the museum and. I had really been impressed by work that is being done at the National Gallery in relationship to the Artemisia Gentileschi exhibition that we're waiting for and how they had managed in the sort of rollout um, awaiting the exhibition. They had brought Artemisia and different paintings of Artemisia into public spaces, including um, an all girls school, including a prison, et cetera. And so I started thinking, how can we get Giovanna Garzoni's works into people's everyday life? And how can we get people to start responding to her art um, creatively? And so the idea of the Garzoni Challenge was born. And um, I went to talk with our partners, the Uffizi and the Medici Archive Project, and, and said, we really would like to um, restore Giovanna Garzoni to the collective consciousness and start talking about historical women and create this bridge, a bridge between artists of the present and artists of the past. It's very important that um, not only do we display works, but we also react to them and, and, um, and have a relationship, form a relationship. Absolutely. No, it's I think I read some about the merging and the emerging of voices. And I think that links as well to the past and the present and what you're trying to do is, while you say like reinstigate that canon, but also instigate a, a, a revival in um, women artists. So perhaps Rhea, you could discuss your involvement in the project as a participating artist. I think um, I can't even say involvement in the project because okay. that makes it sound like something outside of me. It has not just got under my skin, it's in my veins, because I don't... Oh, you lost me. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't make a distinction between the art of the past and the art of the present, and it would be lovely not to make a distinction between women artists and male artists. Having said that, though, um, I have, as an artist, been involved with the history of women as artists, for years from London when I joined the Women's Art Library, which was called the Women Artists Slide Library. And Linda invited me and Jane um, Fortune invited me to be an, art, an advocate for AWA years ago. And I've been involved in speaking on behalf of women artists, drawing attention to the work of AWA. Sorry, Rhea, your microphone seems to be interference. Perhaps it's the block that we missed the last sentences. 
Um, I'm just saying that I've been involved. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. Yeah. AWA, I've been involved with and talked about its work in England and elsewhere. Um, so when Linda got in touch with me at the beginning of February um, about the Gods Only Challenge, it was because I'm in London, I should say. I don't know if we've said that. You're in Italy and I'm in London. And unfortunately, I won't be able to see the exhibition, though I've entered it in all sorts of ways. Um, I got excited thinking about the Gods Only Challenge before it became so significant, uh, because I knew and loved Gavzoni's work. I've lived in Florence for many years. Um, I've seen her work in the fifth year. Sorry, Rhea, we lost you again. I think your microphone must be Where's my somehow... microphone? Where is it in relation to my microphone? <laughs> Usually if it's on a flatter surface, perhaps. If it's on a cushion, it might be somewhat interfering with us hearing you. Can I just... Uh, yeah? Jane, can I just... Yeah really quick um, before Rhea continues, make yeah. a really quick specification, just because some people might not actually know what the Gardzoni Challenge is. Okay. So before, um, she could, before you continue, Rhea, I'll just tell yeah, yeah. listeners very quickly. Maybe yeah. here it'd be better. Okay. Okay. So the, the challenge is an appeal to modern day artists to um, create original work, can be painting, sculpture, photography, any me any media, um, in response to the works of Giovanni Garzoni. And, and it's, a, it's essentially an art conversation. So we are collecting works and um, searching for ways through social media and through publication, et cetera, to share the original works that, that are arising in response to, to Garzoni's work. Okay. I'm just showing you, these are photocopies from what, I'm just showing you these. So we go to the heart of the challenge. Can you see this? We can, we can. And this. Wonderful. So these are from my Xerox, but they're paintings done by an 18, eight year old boy in Rome. So I'm gonna go, and then these are paintings of mine. Incredible. Conversation. I'm gonna talk about it in a moment. Is that all right? When Linda got in touch with me in February, which seems a million years ago, about the Gazzoni Challenge, we were talking about an exhibition that was going to open at the Uffizi Gallery, which I could have visited, and where um, contemporary artists were going to be asked to be involved to continue the conversation, to initiate and continue a conversation about what still life might mean today, but also that very intriguing phrase the greatness of the universe in the art of Giovanna Garzoni. Well, what happened shortly after, after I had arranged to, um, to have some discussions at Goldsmiths College where we were going to have a seminar with artists talking about their work and still life in their work, that's Goldsmiths College at the University of London, the Women's Art Library, with artists in Brighton where I have my studio, where we were going to even talk about crocheted <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> this is actually in response to Gauzoni's work, A Crocheted Lemon by an artist called Francesca Clooney. Um, so all of these events were being planned in February of this year uh, in London and in Brighton. I was going to be speaking about AWA's work and I was also going to initiate some painting workshops in the classes that I give in London and elsewhere. So lots of ideas springing up from that to bring contemporary relevance to a historic artist, to give a new focus on an exhibition at Uffizi, and to show how the art, art in history is actually very much in the present. Mm. Well, when we talked about that, though, we had no idea just how important it was going to become for us in a world in lockdown. I initiated a challenge to this little eight-year-old boy just when Rome, when the rest of Italy went into lockdown, when the exhibition didn't open. And I suddenly thought, this is a little boy who likes to paint. I hardly knew him. I won't tell you the story about that now. I knew him vaguely. So we're not even talking about someone, friends or family or whatever. But I placed myself in the position of an eight-year-old. Can you still hear me? We can, yes. Yeah. 
And I suddenly thought, because I was thinking about still life painting, why don't I involve him? And he stuck there. In London, we were free still. We didn't have lockdown. So I was still in a sort of um, kind of never, never land, if you like. Um, I was going to do my paintings where I was collecting objects that reminded me of distant places and bringing them into my still lives and in that way incorporating the greatness of the Europe universe as a person who's travelled a lot, who's got friends all over the world um, from uh, Colombia to Japan. I actually found objects that then I put into my composition. So that excited me as an artist but then this other way of communicating did. Well, then we went into lockdown. So the events that we planned were cancelled. Goldsmiths College, the events in Brighton, my, my um, teaching opportunities face to face. And suddenly, and I couldn't even get to my studio. So the kitchen where I'm talking now became my studio. And the paintings I created, this one, the last Medici, were the objects that I found around me. This actually quite aptly has got Harold Acton's The Last Medici book oh, in there. <laughs> and also a fabric that came from a friend in Japan. That's just to give you an idea of how the Gazzoni challenge became something different. And this little boy in Rome would respond to paintings he saw of mine. And so I asked Linda, Linda saw his painting and she thought, well, he can be part of the challenge. He mm. responded to a book. So you can see how vital, how important it raised our spirits. Mm. It kept going, but it wasn't just that. It goes to the very essence of what art is, which is a life force and an energy. And the other side of it was discussions that I had. So one was the painting and exchanges with this little boy. The other was conversations with Linda and a group of other people, including Althea Greenan, who may be listening now, who's um, the curator of the Women's Art Library, which is a, started off as a women's art organization documenting the work of women artists and representing artists such as myself from way back in the late 80s. But now it's... Um, it's archive is held at Goldsmiths College in the University of London and with AWA we've had a number of events in collaboration with um, the Women's Art Library. So Althea was going to invite or had invited some contemporary women artists, Felicity Allen and Sarah Khan, and we were going to be having an afternoon seminar where they were going to talk about their work. I've never met them even, so what actually happened was that we met through the internet. And mm. so we kind of continued some conversations. I can't even tell you what they were about, but they somehow kept us alive and brought ideas forward because that's what the creative process is. Anything and everything can feed into you. And this little lemon came out of it. <laughs> While we're discussing the works that have come out of this Garzoni challenge, we have a video we can share showing something about the challenge. So I'll share that with us now. Yeah. It's wonderful to see the variety of interpretations. I think is what's incredible there. You really see all, all the people's skill sets brought to such a common media, a common, uh, let's say, theme is fascinating. And it's um, the sampling, Jane, it's a sampling. So I can imagine there's probably, are we talking hundreds of entries or have you an idea? I, I would say that we're, we're approaching 150 right now. Oh wow, yeah. okay, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what's the deadline if people are prompted or do they still have time to participate? Well, for those who are in Florence, they, oh, 
sorry. Okay. For those who are in Florence, the exhibition runs until the 28th of June, and we are continuing the, the challenge until the 28th. I'll say. Um, certainly the invitation, extending invitation to oh. the artists who would like to participate. And, and it's been amazing to see really the variety of, of works and how and how people responding to the same body of works um, come up with such different such a different take on it. And I think what is has been fascinating to me is how you referred to it as a, a conversation rather than a competition. Uh, so perhaps you could explain a little bit about the importance of that differentiation. Well, we, we really didn't want it to be a contest, um, you know, or create a panel where we would assign value. Um, AWA is characterized really by including people of all walks of knowledge. And so we have among our supporters, we have professional artists and um, we have all, all sorts of, of people within the art scene. And we wanted within this challenge to have professional artists, but also art students and um, art aficionados as well, um, because we really have found through restoration when you when you are restoring a work of art, um, the conservators have always told me that they form a relationship with the artist, mm -hmm. and um, that principle also applies here. You know, we want we in order for us to want to save art by women to reclaim it, in order for it to become part of our collective consciousness, um, we really have to form a relationship with art and with these artists and, um, so it's a friendship I mean it really is a friendship um, that's what we want from an exhibition for us to be friendly with uh, with the artist on the wall etc um, and, and, and oh, sorry to interrupt you um, just so we have time to cover all the many things that AWA is up to right now um, could we perhaps have a discussion about your selection process for the artists whose work you choose to restore or highlight and how do you find these invisible women? Um, how? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, well, a lot of times we're approached by the museum directors themselves or the curators. Um, sometimes we are approached by the restorers themselves. In fact, the, the, the project that we're working on now, which, which is two large scale ovals by an 18th century artist called Yolanda Ferroni, who is still an invisible woman. Um, but her works were found when uh, conservator Elizabeth Wicks was working in San Giovanni di Dio. And she came across these two ovals that we weren't actually aware of and presented them to AWA and, and because we're very interested not just in the big names, um, we're interested in, in reclaiming the invisible women and because they're large scale works that, that are not so common, let's say, for that time period. Um, Ferroni was born in 1720 and she was a very successful artist in her time but is virtually unknown. So. So she seemed to have a lot of things that, that appealed to um, AWA's board of directors, not least to the fact that the themes of the paintings were linked to um, healing. And so we called the project The Art of Healing, and it ended up being very, very apropos in this time, in this time period. Um, it Actually, the first theme of the painting we're going to see a little bit later on is um, St. John of God Heals Plague Victims. And so that theme um, has really has really touched us and become um, real. <laughs> in you neatly introduced the next question, which was the current restoration or the most pre the actual. Uh, is this the project you're working on right now? Is um, perhaps you could tell us about the restoration you're doing right now? Yes, um, there are two that are part two paintings that are part of the art of healing one is saint john of god um saint john of god heals plague victims and the other which we just got in the studio a couple days ago is saint john of god feeds the poor and they're located in, in san giovanni video which is right in the santa Marina river neighborhood it was it was the birthplace of Amerigo Vespucci, the um the navigator who discovered the americas and 
Yes, and so we have two restorers working on it, Elizabeth Wicks and Marina Vincenti, and um, they're, they're, I think I think you can ask me to talk about it once uh, they've seen the video. We're, we, we'd Perfect. like to show the video that has I will, a I will share the video and then uh, a little clip. Can have more. Okay. Okay, so perhaps you could give a bit more light now that we have the visual to accompany the, your words. Sure. Um, well, first of all, the, the, the footage was all filmed by the restorers themselves, the conservatives themselves, which, which is something new because we normally have um, professionals documenting each phase of the restoration. But, but because the filmmaker couldn't actually get there due to lockdown restrictions, uh, the conservators restored and filmed the process. Um, there we saw consolidation and, and when it looks like they're ironing, and I'm not allowed to say ironing, um, but when they're applying localized heat, um, which to the rest of us looks like ironing, they are consolidating the paint layer, layers. Um, because a lot of times through, because of time and um, the passing of time, etc., the, the paint the paint layers will, will flake off or will be damaged, etc. And then you see when they're outside and then they're cutting this, um, they're basically restretching the canvas. And in order to restretch the canvas, they need a little bit of a border. And so you see what we saw here is they're attaching the border onto, onto the original canvas so that then they can stretch it. Um, and um, perhaps, Ray, I could also ask you uh, your perspective as an artist responding to AWA's work and what prompted you to become involved? Uh. <laughs> the reason I'm bringing these in, Windsor & Newton Series 7, the best sable brushes, Queen Victoria, I think, um, had them made for her and they exist is because it brings me to Clauti Lanelli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last, am I allowed to mention that restoration project or is it old um, old news now, Linda? No, no, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of not necessarily answering your question, Jane, but I did want to bring in what links me, um, well, I have been an advocate for women artists and been involved actively from London before I moved to Florence in 1995 because of being involved with the Women's Art Library and on their executive committee. And I think it's very important for us to um, find, reclaim our history. So enough said there. If you can see these brushes, I visited um, Rosella Lari, who was the restorer for Plauti Lanelli's 21-foot Last Supper, um, AWA's major art project, which took, did it take three years, Linda, or was it four? Four, was it four, four years. years, yeah. Mm -hmm. I visited, I think it was, was it last year or two years? Anyway, it was in the Bel Mezzo, in the middle of restoration, uh, the restorer's studio. And it's one of those things, as an artist visiting, brings shivers to your spine to see you can't imagine what 21 foot is till you see this enormous canvas. To imagine a nun 500 years ago, weighed down by the kind of clothes she wore as a woman. I'm as a woman artist who worked on a big scale, but nowhere near that. And I can move freely wearing very little clothing. <laughs> so I could actually 
just understand just what a monumental and ambitious task it was to work on something like that. Then looking up closely at that amazing painting which AWA restored and then presented to the public, and I was there at the ceremony, very moving in October, to hang near Paolo Cello and everyone else in the complex of Santa Maria Novella, to have seen close up what Rossella, the restorer, was doing with brushes this size. This is a number two and this is a number three. Unless you actually see that and then see the scale of a painting like that, you just can't understand. Mm -hmm. The other thing that as an artist and seeing, because this is maybe ties in with what Linda is talking about in terms of what they do as restoration, but to just realize just, just how exciting and how important this work is, the work of restoration. With Rosella, the restorer, I asked her questions about discoveries that she made, and we looked at little particular moments in that painting, and we're there next to it. And the, it, the level of detail was amazing. Some of them were almost like contemporary still lives. And remember, still lives, coming back to Garzoni, even Caravaggio said that to paint a still life required as much artistry as anything else. So it's not a, a let's say, a minor genre. Mm -mm. I made a thing about that. So we looked closely at it, but the thing that really struck me was the hands in that painting. And as an artist, hands are really important to me, but I think hands, portray as much of a person's psychology and the way they use their hands, how I'm using them now, um, and as an artist, the way you hold a brush, as, as a face. And mm. what was really distinctive about Plautila Nelly's Last Supper was noticing how individual the hands were um, in it. I mean, you'll see countless Last Suppers by men, my major artists, but very often they're sort of standardized feet or whatever. But I've never noticed hands with such variety. So what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what did you, well, that was definitely, you did answer the question in the sense of what it means for you as an artist. So you're, you're, you've seen, there is clearly an impact on, you know, AWA's work for you as an artist, but also what prompted your involvement with AWA? Why well, did you I was in, well, I don't think I, I think they chose me. No, I have to say, today I was reading back through some of my old The Florentine articles that I wrote. I mean, Linda and I go back a while before AWA, uh, 2005 or 2006, when The Florentine just started, when you interviewed me for something, for an exhibition I was having. Um, I saw that it was in April 2010 that I came to Villa Il Palmerino, my first time, for the presentation by Jane Fortune and Linda of a book called Invisible Women. Yes. I was really, which I wanted to find out more about. It had just come out a few months before, but they were presenting it there. And that was the beginning, let's say. I don't think AWA as such existed then. Was it, had it, had it been founded? AWA was founded in 2009. Oh, it was then. Okay. Okay. But reading back, do you know what I wrote then? So much has happened since then in terms of perception of women artists in Florence, the work that's been done, that it almost seems outdated, <laughs> what I wrote. I mean, it really was a beginning. But for me, that was the first involvement. Of course, I got the book. I didn't realize that I was going to become more involved, but I did. Uh, wrote. Um, it became an involvement also with other partners, um, Villa El Palmerino and the Associazione, who became friends. Uh, you've collaborated with them on exhibitions about women artists. I've done work with them, and they're a home from home in Florence. So when I was then asked, well, I was invited to the presentation in the uh, Salone del Cinquecento, you know, for Florence's grand salon frescoed. Is it, Leonardo's met frescoes are meant to be under the other frescoes anyway, but sculptures mm -hmm. were Michelangelo and whatever in that grand chamber. Jane Fortune was going to be presented with the city's highest honor, um, the Fiorino d'Oro, uh, by the mayor of Florence. And you invited me to that. I'm not sure if I was already involved with AWA then, but I came to that ceremony, so it all coincided. And, and I wrote about it for the Florentine as well. <laughs> 
again, very, very moving because to have that acknowledgement, it's really entering the city's history. And as we know, when sadly Jane died, she was commemorated. But in her being commemorated, we're all being commemorated. This isn't to steal her limelight, but it's to show how much women as artists and their history and all of the work that's been done by everyone, the restorers, all the other, the volunteers, all the people, the people who've written about it, talked about it, they've all entered the consciousness of the city to the extent that the founder of AWA, Jane, when she died, she was honored with a memorial service in Santa Croce, okay. where the pantheon, Italy's pantheon of great men. And I couldn't be there that day, but I did write a letter to the Financial Times and they published it on that day. <laughs> about it. So what I'd like to say is that how, in small ways, whatever we do, we are impinging on a greater consciousness. It's not just Florence, it's not just about women, women artists and as I say when I look back to that day in 2010 when you Jane and uh, no you Linda and Jane Fortune presented um, presented the book it was really I just feel that so much has been done since then even the, the whole thing of Artemisia Gentileschi having when it eventually opens this major exhibition at the National Gallery in London Michael Palin I was there when Michael Palin was making that film uh, on Artemisia and it was shown, I don't, do you know who I mean if I say Michael Palin to anyone? He's a broadcaster, a British broadcaster and very much a household name in England. Well, this is another example of AWA's work. Um, there was a, there were a series of Artemisia Gentileschi events in Florence and I was at one presentation of um, a talk given by a great Artemisia scholar and there was Mark, uh, Michael Palin filming there suddenly in Florence. I thought nothing more of it. Mm. Uh, it was Christmas of that year, whatever year it was, and I got emails and things from friends and they said, oh, we've just seen you on the BBC. And I thought, what? And it was the first I knew that on Boxing Day, Festa di Santo Stefano, the day after Christmas Day, prime time television in the UK, nine o'clock, a documentary on Artemisia Gentileschi, which included AWA's work, had appeared. And I was just some little cameos at the end because I happened to be in there. I wasn't talking about anything or whatever. But what I'm saying is people I didn't even see regularly <laughs> got in touch with me. But the important thing also is it wasn't being presented by Linda or Jane or any other of us women involved with the arts. It was being presented by this man in at a time when so many people would be seeing it who would not normally be seeing that. Now that for me, is just an enormous leap. Absolutely. The so, impact, impact is really widespread. Um, yeah. um, so what's next then? Can you tell us anything about uh, AWA's upcoming projects? Or yeah. obviously COVID-19 has weighed laced any plans that most people have made, but have you any ideas of where you'd like to go with AWA? Well, I think, I think um, before, before I say that, I just want to say that Boxing Day is a lucky day for AWA. Or is it? <laughs> Boxing Day. Yeah, because this year, um, or I guess you would say last year, last Boxing Day, we, we were featured on the Today Show. Um, oh, wow. Boxing Day. And, um, and we have a good, a good relationship with Christmas because um, actually the Artemisia Gentileschi uh, painting that we restored in 2008 so before AWA was actually even formalized um the Artemis Gentileschi David and Bathsheba was presented and exhibited as a Christmas gift to the city of Florence so um I think Christmas comes back to us very often throughout the year uh because really the spirit of of giving and giving back to the city which is the core at the core of this mission um Mm -hmm. Those good seeds, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, in terms of the future, what we're what we're looking at now is um, really trying to establish and create an AWA archive. Um, okay. Because we have, we have such an incredible patrimony 
the, the actual physical restoration of the painting is just part of the work that we do because conservation projects happen periodically over time. It's not that we restore something, we restore something today and then it never needs restoration again. You know, restorations happen periodically, but the real restoration that we do is a lot of times photographic in the sense of documenting every aspect of the project um, so that the public and scholars particularly and researchers can have um, access to to images okay and through this access they can then start creating new attributions and, and new study etc because one of the huge problems with art by women when we started um, mm -hmm. back in 2007 i started in 2007 before AWA existed, but the, the total lack of images of Art by Women. Mm -hmm. And so we have an amazing archive with thousands of photographs taken during our um, 67 restorations and different events and outreach. And um, so it's very important that we, that we find a home for this archive. And we're also now working with um, the Frick Museum in New York, they, they have chosen AWA's website to um, be part of their permanent digital archives. So they had, they had recognized a need that a lot of times, um, particularly for art galleries you know, that, and, for, and for publications that are only digital, right? So digital native publications, et cetera, websites are among them. And to, you know, to stop them from being lost when the website goes under or to stop um, or to keep them preserved essentially. So, so we're working with them as well so that um, a lot of the resources that we have collected and gathered on the website can be available for posterity. And this is very, very important to me because um, as, as a writer, I've found that, that in researching art by women, that the utter lack of of not even information, the utter lack of information, but in my case, the utter lack of words. Mm -hmm. Especially for the women artists, you don't have a lot of their own writing, their own letters, their own conversation, their own quotes. This changes slightly in the 20th century, but it's still very, um, very, very small what you can find in terms of what their voices were. And that's another reason why the Guard Sony Challenge is important to me because I I, I do want to I, I want posterity to remember that there was an exhibition on Giovanni Guard Sony, but I also want posterity to remember that it meant something to the women and men, to the to the artists of that time. And this is what they said about it through their work, you know. Um, and so to me, I think how the most important work that we do is really recording every element of the work that we do because the, the, the rediscovering the, the female artists is, is very exciting right but it's also equally exciting to see how women of today become part of their stories mm -hmm. um and this is and Rhea is obviously a, an example of this but but i think we're part of um we're part of their of their experience. We're part of their success, mm -hmm. you know, and and they will be part of our success as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful words. It's uh, mm -hmm. you've given so much color to our understanding of these artists through your work as well. And that's as you said, it's adding the words as well as having these works exhibited. Mm -hmm. It's full socio historical context. It's the the ideologies of these women. It's the lives they lived. It's. Yes. it's there's so many tentacles spreading out from these messages that you're sending that it's really is incredible to see the work you're doing. And, and I suppose, Rhea, could we ask you about anything that you have uh, upcoming uh, for your art work as well? To keep, uh, get the art? I'm living very much, I'm in lockdown. <laughs> London. I haven't been on any form of transport for three months, but it's been, I have to say, it's not because of the God's Only Challenge, but it did help to give a focus to things I was doing, because normally I travel up and down, not just between Brighton, where I have my studio in London, but I'd have leapt onto a plane and gone to Florence, or I'd have gone to Athens. I mean, I'm traveling this part of what I did. And so I haven't thought about the future, <laughs> um, the future, 
but the future is contained in the present. And all I can see is that I feel so much creative energy. Now, I'll tell you where the future is contained. The future is, I'll tell you what I would love to do, if there's anyone out there. I'd love to publish. I haven't seen the originals of these. As I say, I printed with what this little boy has been sending me. Mm. And at times, if we want to talk about hope for the future and thinking of the future, to think of an eight-year-old boy in Rome producing things that I, th I mean, I think his sense of um, composition, et cetera, is way better than mine. I mean, there's no competition. Okay. <laughs> Going back to what we were saying. <laughs> Well, let's just say I think he's a great artist. Mm -hmm. He is the future. So if something of the energy, and I think of art, like just saying, what am I doing? I'm mm -hmm. just a little part of something, and I express it, whether I'm being an advocate for women artists, whether through my writing, whether through my painting, whether through exciting other people, teaching, putting little seeds everywhere. And I just know that all of those things are interlinked and they feed whatever it is that I'm doing. But if there's a particular project, I'd love to do a book that documents, that shows the exchange of com the conversation that I've been having, which in the boys' sense is his paintings and a lot of words that I've accompanied those paintings with. And Linda knows because you've been party to a lot of those words. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a wonderful project for the future. And it would give hope and stimulus to so many people of all ages everywhere. That's certainly what to look out for it. So I will we'll, we'll publish the release of this book when you have it all organized. You can let us know. <laughs> Um, what about if people have been inspired to get involved? What can people do to become part of AWA? Well, I think I think um, one of the, one of the first things that they can do is sign up for our newsletter. That's a very mm. simple thing on the on the website to to become um, to, to to receive information about our projects. And then another thing is to sign up for the Art Angel program, which um, essentially is is an invitation for art advocacy. Um, and art advocacy can, can mean even the simplest of things. It can mean going into a local museum where you live and saying, where are the art by women? Because mm -hmm. AWA started that way. That was actually the beginning of Advancing Women Artists when Jane Fortin went into the Museum of, of San Marco and the Museums of Florence in general and said, where are the women? Um, and the answer, we're still discovering the answer and asking new questions. Um, but yes, the Art Angel program is a, um, it implies a contribution at, at various levels. So you can go onto the website and, and check that out. Um, but we certainly, we have been approached by many, um, well, actually many artists, many artists have approached uh, me over the years saying, you know, how can we get involved? How can we form a community? And, and we, because Florence has a tradition of the Mud Angels, um, we thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to do the Art Angels? Because I find that people are very um, sort of look upon those days following the flood with such affection, you know, and they say, we really um, rolled up our sleeves, we really did our best for the city. And there was a lot of solidarity and a lot of um, desire to, to recover what had been lost. And I really, I really believe that that's not something that has to necessarily be tied to a tragedy. You know, we don't have to wait for Florence to lose 14,000 artworks before we take a stand and decide that, that the victims, the art victims, that could be victims of time, not just victims of, of the flooding river, you know, that they deserve to be upheld. And so that's why we named the project the Art Angels Program, um, and and it's it's very interesting. And there are people that you know every year re-register as an Art Angel, and um, we try and keep the conversation up and offer them opportunities to to do studio visits when possible. And and that's what we're looking forward to as well, and, you know, as hopefully in, in the beginning of um, autumn. Yeah. Thank you both so much. You've given such inspiration as well for people to you know, to learn more about these women artists and to go see the exhibition and uh, what about me are you going to give me a virtual oh. 
visit. <laughs> a what? A virtual visit of the exhibition, the Ganzo <laughs> exhibition. I'm not going to be able to do it. It's, it's unfortunate, uh, but um, there's certainly a lot of um, the articles you've written about the exhibition I've shared with our listeners. So you can read up more about the, the Garzoni exhibition at Pitti Palace as well. And I'll say thank you both to you so much mm -hmm. and um, looking forward to seeing what's next for AWA and for Rea as an artist. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll hear more uh, soon. And thank you to everyone who's listened in as well. And, it was certainly very interesting for me and I'm sure for everyone who's joined in. A lot of admiration was spread in the comments so you can have a look there to see the love that is for AWA and the work you do as well. And so the rest of the TF Together lineup can be found at the link below and the next speech, will, uh, the next talk will be tomorrow at 5 p.m. with Justin Ransolf Thompson speaking about Black History Month Florence. And so thank you both again. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been thank you. Very fun. Bye. Bye. Bye.